Hello everybody, Louis here. Let's talk C sharp. Today we'll talk about the for each loop. So we've talked about the for loop, the while loop, the do while loop. We only have one more loop remaining, and that's the for each loop. And it's I think I can I can say it's my my favorite loop. Um, just because it, it simplifies uh, the loop declaration so much. So let's talk about that. Um, so this is a loop, so in order to explain a loop, it's probably a good idea to have some sort of collection on the screen, something that we can work with, um, and, you know, maybe do a couple of examples. Uh, so let's say that I have a string array with all uh, days of the week, and what I want to do is I want to write a loop that displays the array contents for me. So as you know, if I just do a console write line, days and run this code this actually does not work right so i only get gibberish it's not well it's not really gibberish it's just, it's just telling me uh what this data type is what the data type of my object is um but guess what i'm trying to say is that it doesn't show the contents of the array i'm trying to display right so for that if we want to do that, what we actually have to do, um, it, or at least this is one of the possible solutions, um, to create a loop that iterates over the array and displays each element. So how do we do that? So if we were to write a for loop, it would look something like this, and we would use a days.length. That's always a best practice compared to just saying something like i less than 7. Um, and then I will do a console write line days i. So I'm indexing the values that I want to display. So this code actually works. There's nothing wrong with it. If I run this, you'll see that it does actually give me the contents of the array, which is good. It's fine. It works. Um, but maybe this can be simplified. And that's when the for each loop comes into play. And the declaration is very simple. We have to use the for each. Again, English is your friend, right? So for each, that's the keyword we're looking for. As, you know, all major statements in C Sharp will we'll have a pair of parentheses and we'll, we'll have a pair of curly braces. So what goes inside the for each declaration? That's very simple. In this case, because I'm working with an array of strings, each element inside that array has to be a string, right? And I'm going to temporarily call it day. I can call it whatever I want. In this case, because it's an array of days, I'll just call it day. But I can give it any name I want. I can call it D if I want to. I can call it Louis if I want to. So it doesn't matter as long as it's it's meaningful. So you know, remember that your variables they they in an ideal world all variables have meaningful names. So I'm just call it day. So string day in days. So very straightforward. And this is what people talk about when they say that that, that C sharp is a high level programming language. Because, because it's a high-level programming language, this is almost plain English to us. So for each day in my days array, right? What I'm going to do here is I'm going to throw in a console write line. And remember that this time, I don't have to do stuff like days i. Because I don't have the i variable anymore. So... And this is when this is when having a for loop will make your life so much easier because you are actually creating a temporary variable that will represent individual elements in your array. So you don't need to call the array element uh, through the index anymore. You can just say day. Because again, in the declaration, what you're saying is that for each element in my array, and I know that this element is a string, and I know that it lives in the days array, okay? 
and I'm going to temporarily call it day. And what that means is that when this loop is running, when this code right here is, is running, for each iteration, each element inside that array will temporarily, temporarily be called day. Okay? And this is exactly what it's doing. So if I run this code, look at that, I get the same result as before. Okay, so let's take a look at the code versus the output. So what it's giving me is I'm gonna I'm just gonna say it one more time. I know sometimes I get a, a bit repetitive, but you know, I just want to make sure that I get this message across. Okay. So I have a string array and I have seven values in it. Okay. Each value is one day of the week. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm using the for each loop to iterate over my array of strings, which is called days. Okay. And what I'm doing is I'm temporarily calling each individual element a day. And I know because it's a string array, this has to be a string. Okay. And because I, I already am calling each one of these elements day, I can just do a console write line. And whenever I have to use that array element, I can just call the day variable because the day variable is pointing to the same value. So maybe the question you're asking yourself is, if day is a temporary name for my array element, for how long does it apply? And that's a great question. So it is a temporary name and it applies while you are in that iteration. Okay. And what that means is that when I start my for each loop, the very first iteration or the very first loop or the very first time it runs, day will be equal to Sunday. But then it'll run the code and it'll start over again, at which point day will flip to Monday. And then it'll run the second time. And then it'll start again. Day will flip to Tuesday and all the way until I don't have any, any other elements left to iterate over. Okay. And this is, this is essentially how for each loop uh, works. It is very simple and especially now that you're already a specialist on uh, loops in C-sharp. So I hope this video makes sense um, and I'm looking forward to seeing you using for each loops in your code now. Um, so that was it for this video. I hope you learned something new and I'll see you next time. Cheers.